extract without filtering. Class code FF 2.1, revised May 2019. What is crack? Approximately on an annual basis, your property will go under an MOR review. This is a management and occupancy review. This auditor is going to review your resident files, review the physical plans of the property, and is going to be ensuring that we are monitoring and addressing track errors. In order to show that we are being compliant with track requirements, we have to show that residents are qualified correctly, that tenant rent and assistance payments are calculated correctly. This includes showing the income verification and other documentation that we are using to calculate these figures. That existing residents comply with annual lease certifications as required. That residents who pass away or move out are processed correctly. That the unit rent and utility allowance are correct and updated. This means if you have a new rent schedule come out, that we are processing that gross rent and transmitting it on a timely basis. And that the monthly HAP is correct and we are receiving the correct amount of subsidy. TRAX is one of the subsystems in Secure System. When you sign into Secure System, you should see TRAX listed as one of your systems if you were given access to TRAX. If you require access, please contact the main office and we can assist with getting you set up. To set access TRAX, you will click on the link that says Tenant Rental Assistance Certification System for TRAX. It will bring you to this page with a single link. If you click on Voucher Tenant Queries, it will bring you to the page of queries or reports that we have access to run in TRAX. So starting on the left-hand side in this session, we will go through the voucher queries that are the most helpful and most relevant to you at the site. So the two that we want to cover with you are the voucher query we use to check if your HAP has been received and is being paid with no errors, as well as the voucher tenant compliance query to ensure that your compliance percentage is 100%. We're going to start with that voucher tenant compliance query because it is SHP policy to run this report by the 15th of the month. We suggest that you run this when you run your EIB report because you're signed into Secure System anyway. In doing so, by the 15th of the month allows time in the month to correct any issues with your CA before the end of the month. Your CA is required to complete their processing of your HAP uh, before the end of the month, and so you will need to be in touch with them if there are errors. So when you select the voucher tenant compliance query, you will see uh, the Section 8 contract number option on the left-hand side, so you'll scroll through, find your contract number. You only have access to one property, you only see one contract number listed there. When you have clicked on the appropriate contract number or the project number in the second scroll bar, you can select submit. You'll then have a report such as the screenshot here. You'll see in the middle of that small table is compliance percentage. The goal is to have this number be 100%. Less than 100% means that you have households missing from your active tenant count in track. So you have households that are being listed as active on your HAP, but they are not active in track. Over 100% means you have too many active households. Generally, this means a move out did not process. So again, if you're over 100%, you have more households active than the number of units you build for in your HAP. So for example, you may have 101 active households in track, but only 100 households receiving subsidy per your HAP. And in the example below, this compliance percentage is 100.5. The active number of households in track is 198. However, there are only 197 being billed for on the HAP. So there is a duplicate household or a duplicate unit with a second household that is uh, listed as active. 
Generally, this is because of a move-out certification that did not hit track. You have two different households living in the same unit. A quick way to identify that error is to use the track multiple occupancy query to identify if there are two households in one unit. You'll select either your project number or contract number from the drop-down and click Submit. And you should see a very easy to read report such as this. With two households listed in one unit, you'll need to identify which household needs to be moved out. Contact your CA to have them transmit the certification to track. The CA may indicate that they need you to resend the certification to them. And if so, uh, you can do this from one site. If you need instructions on doing this, please see class FS 2.3. Transmitting track data for more information. If your compliance percentage is less than 100, this means you have fewer households active in track than the number of units you build for. So, for example, you may have 90 active households in track, but 100 households receiving subsidies for your HAP. In the example screenshot below, the compliance percentage is 99.3 and there are 148 active tenants, but 149 units are being billed for on the HAP. How does this happen? In some cases, this is due to a household that is missing the most recent annual recertification and has been terminated by HUD. This marks that household as inactive in track. You can identify these households by reviewing the track late recertification report. You will need to contact your CA to confirm that they, they've received that file, and if not, resend that file to them. Another reason that the compliance percentage may be less than 100 is a move out may not have processed in track, or a move in rather, may not have processed in track. Below is an example of a move-in that is missing in track, so it was transmitted on the HAP. So in this case, this move-in is for Unit 1403. However, when looking at the track certification list, there is no Unit 1403 listed as an active household. In a review of the move-in move-out report, this new household is not listed. So this certification has not yet hit track. It is possible the CA has it and is still processing the certification. We'd suggest check back in two weeks to see if it has been processed, if this was transmitted with the most recent uh, HAP request. If it was transmitted prior to the most recent HAP request, you will need to contact your CA to have them transmit that certification to track. And if they need that file resent, you can do so. If this was the most recent HAP request that that certification was transmitted with, you'll want to recheck this report in two weeks to confirm that the move-in has processed. If not, you will then need to contact your CA to ensure that they receive the file and can forward that to track for you. The second track voucher report is the voucher query. And it is SHP policy to run this report by the 26th of the month. This allows your CA time to receive and process your HAP request and your track files. This is going to give you an accurate update on whether your HAP was received, whether it is being processed, whether it is being paid. So once you have clicked on the voucher query link, simply select your contract number or project number and click Submit should have a nice report like this. Please note that this report does extend quite a bit to the right, so do not be afraid. However, most of the columns that we'll be reviewing are towards the left-hand side, which is what I have screenshotted for you. The first thing that you will want to do is look on the second column to the left, the voucher date and ensure that the most recent voucher that you transmitted is listed at the top. As a reminder, we always submit vouchers a month in advance for Section 8 properties. So if you are Section 8, 
you should see that listed as the subsidy type on this screen. And it is the month of May. You would have transmitted your June tax one month in advance. If you do not see your voucher listed here, your CA may not have received or processed your request. If you are not seeing your voucher here and it is the 26th of the month, please contact your CA to confirm that they received your HAP and that they are processing them. The second thing to do once you have confirmed that that most recent voucher is listed is to check the status code and estimated pay date to ensure that the HAP is due to be paid. In the example below, you see the status code is P10, and there is not yet an estimated pay date. That is okay, but it is not ideal. So to obtain information on the status code, you can click on that voucher ID link. That is an active link that will lead you to additional information on the voucher. The fourth option on that menu is voucher discrepancies. And this voucher discrepancies window is going to give you specific information regarding the status of that voucher. In the example below, you can see highlighted the most recent status for this voucher. So GS, voucher status, P10, as we saw on the first screen. So this means that the voucher has been accepted for payment. So that is what you want to see, either that the voucher has been accepted for payment or that the voucher has gone to Treasury for payment. If you do not see that your voucher has been accepted for payment, you must contact your senior manager and the director of compliance immediately. This will allow us time to reconcile any issues with your CA and ensure that we are receiving payment as soon as possible. The last item that you want to review on the voucher query is the compliance percentage. You're going to ensure that you do not have households missing in tracks that may prevent payment. Your total compliance percentage must be greater than 90% to ensure payment on your voucher. This voucher query is the report that we ask that you print the PDF and save to your month end folder on N Drive. When you're on the remote desktop, you can simply click print, select faucet PDF printer, and this will allow you to save this PDF directly to your month end folder for review by your compliance analyst. If you have any questions on reviewing or saving your voucher query, please contact your analyst.